ad hoc on COVID-19 Recovery and Neighborhood Investment Committee for Wednesday, September 28th. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council President Martinez. Council President Martinez. Present. Council Member Harris Dawson. Absent. Council Member Price. Absent. Council Member Cedillo. Present. Council Member O'Farrell. Present. Three members present and a quorum, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. We're gonna go ahead and jump into public comment members. I like to make sure that the members of the public are aware that since there are other committees scheduled this afternoon, our members need to get going. So I will limit public comment to about 45 minutes, maybe a little bit more depending on how many callers we have. But I do wanna remind um, the members of the public, I do not wanna lose quorum in this committee. So we need to make sure that um, we can get through public comment um, quickly and effectively because people, some of these fo folks on our, on our um, committee need to head out to another committee meeting that's happening um, right after ours. So I just wanna make sure everyone understands that. Um, Mr. City Attorney, can you please explain our speaking rules to the members of the public, please? Of course, Madam President. So um, this is an ad hoc meeting. It's necessarily special. So there is no general public comment. There's this comment on the item and there's exactly one item. So members of the public, when it's your turn to speak, just start up. You'll have one minute to speak on the one item on the agenda. Um, and when your time's up, we'll let you know and we'll move on to the next speaker so that we can get through as many people as we can in the time. I, I think with that, we're ready to start, Madam President. Okay, why don't we go ahead and take the first speaker? Madam Chair, if I may read the call-in instructions as well. Oh, I apologize, yes, of Thank course. Thank you. Sorry. As indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment on items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-855-4858 and then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask the caller to press star six to unmute. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and take the first caller. Please state right, your name ahead. and begin. Um, uh, speak on, I guess it's only one item, item one and general public comment. So there's, there's no general public comment. This is only, um, this is a special right. committee meeting. So you have one minute to speak on item number one. Okay. So basically we should be offering permanent protections for tenants. Um, every eviction that happens is violence and we need to, and especially with the continued expansion of 4118, we need to make sure that people remain housed, no, make sure that no one is getting evicted. Um, and I hear constantly about how the landlords are struggling or whatever, except most landlords own numerous properties or are making a prof, are just trying to profit further off, further wall, while tenants suffer. So we need to offer permanent protections for tenants, make sure that no one gets evicted, um, to make sure that if people are struggling to make rent, they get assistance. Um, we, and we need to make sure that if someone, if people need to, Thank you. people don't get evicted. Thank you, Speaker. Next speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, I'm, I'm Liz Record, um, and I'm speaking item one. I can start now with my minute. Yes, please. Great. Um, I'm a member of the Coalition of Small Winter Property Owners. My husband and I are foster parents. We use most of our life savings to purchase half of a duplex with my in-laws to provide a stable home for our growing foster family because we cannot afford to buy a single family home in LA. And by law, we have the right to do that. But this eviction moratorium has dragged on for more than two years and we still cannot live in our own home. Instead, our home has been stolen from us so that three guys in their 30s who have not claimed a COVID hardship can go to Burning Man, rent yachts for birthday parties, gamble at horse races, and sail up in hot air balloons. And it has been stolen from us, but our tenants are not the ones that stole it. 
been stolen by these overly broad policies that you've been up upholding for the last two and a half years. Um, is hurting innocent families like ours and letting um, people take advantage of us. We don't want government handouts. We just want to live in our own home. We are not rich. We are not like that previous speaker said. We invested all of our savings to have a place to live, and now we can't. It's time to end the eviction moratorium, and please don't let, don't delay it, this going to a Thank, thank you. Please state your name and begin. Hi, yes, this is Richie Serjango from the People City Council. Um, one, Nuri, uh, I think it's ridiculous that you want to cut the uh, public comment down because you have other places to be. This is your job. People are taking time off from their day to call in. I also want to say to the landlords that uh, buying a duplex is an investment. It's not, a, it's not your house. And to get a real job, stop being a landlord. Um, I'm calling in solidarity with the Keep LA House Coalition. As a renter, I want to urge the city to implement permanent tenant protections before phasing out emergency COVID-19 tenant protections. Uh, with rent prices and inflation skyrocketing, many of us are struggling to make up for the rent we missed due. Nuri, you love to say that you uh, enacted a strong eviction moratorium uh, and that you stand up for renters, even though you yourself are landlord, Nuri. Um, this is your opportunity to actually do right by people in Los Angeles. Um, and yeah, and that's all I got to say. Thanks. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Yeah, this is Robert. Uh, my family owns a rental unit in Atwater Village. Uh, the rent freeze uh, going on for another year. This, this makes no sense. Uh, everything absolutely must end now. Honestly, there's no justification at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Ryan Horton, Council District 5. I'm calling in to implore you to recommend ending the COVID-19 tenant protections as the LAHD has recommended. Uh, we're, my family and I are part of a group that's far too often overlooked of those who purchase a tenant-occupied home who wish to occupy the property solely by ourselves. We have no interest in being landlords due to these protections. We've been unable to evict the woman who occupies the triplex she recently purchased. She's refused buyout offers. She's contested information provided by LADBS, LAHD, and the Bureau of Engineering about her unit being illegal and that she'll need to vacate. And she's lived there for almost a, rent, a year now, rent-free, uh, while refusing to vacate. She does this because she knows she can live there rent-free while collecting a relocation fee at the end, and it's completely unfair. As someone who doesn't want to be a landlord and who just wants to live in his home alone and peacefully with his family, I beg you to please end these protections or at least allow certain evictions to resume. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Fred Sutton, California Apartment Association. Our members help house Los Angeles. The economy has fully been reopened. Vaccines are widely available. The president of the United States has said the pandemic is over. The conditions of 2020 are completely different than today. Despite all this progress, the city of LA stands alone, continuing measures that long ago should have ended. The Board of Supervisors is ending their countywide moratorium and is lifting its rent freeze. The city moratorium is being abused. It doesn't matter if you operate one unit or 200 units. It is wrong to continue to be forced to provide the service of housing without compensation. End the rent freeze today. Costs are skyrocketing, yet people who were never impacted financially nor health-wise are prohibited from receiving needed financial adjustments to maintain the city's housing stock. It's inappropriate to use the pandemic crisis to rush through permanent regulations. The emergency measures should be discussed on their own, while unrelated regulations deserve the proper setting for discussion and vetting. It's time to do the right thing and return to proper process. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Bijan. Uh, I'm a tenant organizer with Community Power Collective. Uh, I want to 
um, recommend um, uh, extending the uh, moratorium. There's a clear difference here between um, small landlords and and mostly corporate landlords, um, you know, having their bottom line readjusted, or um, uh, uh, thousands and thousands of, of vulnerable working class, um, disabled, elderly, and uh, and young tenants um, get, uh, becoming homeless. Okay, so um, I, I, I highly recommend that this board um, introduce legislation to protect um, unauthorized occupants. Ton of leaseholders have passed away during this pandemic um and we need to protect the tenants that have been paying rent um even though they're not on the contract we need um uh, tenant protections for um uh, folks with uh, pets we need universal just cause um we need to protect um the most thank vulnerable you. thank you speaker Please state your name and begin. Hi, this is Edna Monroy with SAGE, Strategic Action for a Just Economy. I am a tenant rights advocate and I am also a tenant myself. I grew up in District A and I also live in City 10 right now. Um, like many other tenants, we are struggling. Uh, we host a weekly tenant action clinic and we've been seeing an increased number of evictions, harassment. A lot, of, a lot of poverty, a lot of grief, people have died. I myself have gotten sick, I have lost family members, and if you think that tenant rights advocates are protected, guess what, we're not, because I myself also, I, I'm dealing with an eviction. So we need these protections permanent, we need to make sure that we as LA set an example for others to follow, especially with this worsening housing crisis. So do what's right, stand with tenants, and pass permanent tenant protection. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 4733, please press star six to unmute. Once more, caller with the phone number ending in 4733. Please state your name and begin. Uh, my name is Adriana Medina. I'm a homeowner that lives in San Fernando Valley. I'm calling in support to the renter. January 1st is gonna end the protection for renters to have animals. Uh, what's gonna happen? The, the shelters are gonna full, be gonna be full of animals and the city is not gonna have the, the budget to see those animals or to take care of those animals. And now, after January 1st, we're going to have not only homeless people, we're going to have homeless animals. Remember, in the, during the pandemic, everybody was so happy because the shelter was empty because everybody was adopting animals. Well, that protection is going to end January 1st, and we're going to have a big, huge problem. Animals are part of our family. There are uh, health people with special needs. We need to protect them and protect the families that have those animals. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Daniela, I'm proud to be a partner association of Grand Los Angeles. The city's moratorium on evictions and rent increases must book end this year. LA County has established a clear path forward and is ending the county's moratoriums this year. The city must do the same after nearly three years of significant city fees and rates increases, SCAF, Recicla, DWP, to name a few. It is critical that the city recognize the plight of rental housing providers and allow them to issue rent increases in, in 2023. Permanent housing policy changes require thoughtful analysis and meaningful stakeholder feedback and should not be merged with the end of these emergency actions. The city must return to a deliberative mode of policymaking, one that fosters vital stakeholder engagement 
and away from the reactionary mode of recent years. Thank, thank, thank you, Speaker. You. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. <clears throat> Natalie Medina. I'm a tenant and I live in East Hollywood and I'm also an attorney with Heart LA and in solidarity with the Keep LA Health Coalition. As a pet owner and a tenant, I want to urge the city to ensure that people and pets uh, that have been protected during the emergency period continue to be protected and not exposed to an undue threat of eviction. No one should be evicted because they had to combine households or because they got a pet during the pandemic. Uh, landlords have the tools they need to address problems if they arrive. Uh, I keep hearing about, oh, these uh, moratoriums. As an eviction defense attorney, I have been defending evictions throughout the majority of the pandemic with exclusion of two months at the very beginning. Uh, so we should not hurt families' chances of staying housed, you know, just and tearing them apart. This law also protects tenants with disabilities who get emotional support animals because it's been so difficult to access mental health services during the pandemic. I lost my grandmother and my father during the pandemic. We got two pets, these animals, they helped us survive that, you know, this entire, entire uh, situation. Landlord profits may be hurting, but the comparison to tenants. Thank, thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, uh, this is Vinit DeVos, and uh, I bought a triplex for the same need I think few other people mentioned for me and my family. I have been getting harassed by these tenants that who have been living here. There is nothing I can do. And at this point, I really, really want to request uh, city to allow me and my family to move into the house I bought more than a year ago and, you know, not sacrifice my family at the cost of others. In the end, there has to be a reason and the basis at which we are taking this decision and like a lot of other people mentioned earlier this pandemic is over in every aspect except for the one that we see the restrictions that are putting on housing in los angeles city and i really don't see a need anymore and i believe you guys agree as well thank you thank you Caller with the phone number ending in 0233, please press star six to unmute. Please state your name and begin. Good afternoon, Madam President and uh, other members of the council. My name is Christine Rangel. I live in Council District 11. I am considered a landlord, yet I am a first generation American on one side of my family and I've worked all my life to put myself through school. In fact, I'm still paying off my graduate school loans to this day. I lived with my family for years while working a professional job so that I could save money to put down a down payment on the American dream and have my own condo where now, thank God, I can call home. However, the last two years, I've been taking care of a sick family member out of the country, leaving my condo empty. Not because I don't want to fill it with a renter, but because I'm terrified that my hard-earned condo will be stolen from me in a way that it has been from other people in my condo complex who have tenants claiming to be suffering from the pandemic, all the while posting their glamorous trips across the world on Instagram. Working hard all of your life so that you can have a roof over your head is not a crime, but in LA, Thank it feels like it. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ahmad. Uh, I'm a 65-year-old retired engineer. My wife and I uh, own uh, a couple of fourplexes in San Fernando Valley. These units are basically our uh, pension retirement plan. The rent freeze and eviction moratorium is severely impacting our lives in retirement. The cost of repairs and upkeep of the properties have gone up significantly, but we cannot increase the rent. I urge you, uh, please, to end the moratorium and rent freeze. The pandemic is over. Please. Thank you.
please state your name and begin. My name is Sarah Wiltfong, and I'm with the Los Angeles County Business Federation, also known as BizFed, an alliance of over 220 business organizations that represent over 410,000 employers in the LA region. We wish to express our strong support to responsibly phase out of the city's eviction moratorium and rent freeze. Since 2020, the city has maintained this moratorium and rent freeze, but has taken no action to set clear timelines and criteria for the lifting of these emergency measures. Inflation is at the highest level in decades. Operational costs are continually increasing. And unfortunately, as you've just heard, for many landlords, the system is being abused. The pandemic is over. We are in a very different state than we were two years ago. There is no need to continue these emergency measures. We implore you to support this item and end the rent freeze and moratorium so that housing providers throughout the city can resume normal operations and ensure investments in housing. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. My name is Eduardo Mundo. I'm a member of the Small Rental Property Owners Association. And I just like the ad hoc committee to really just focus on the housing department's recommendations and on the eviction moratorium. Although I do not believe in everything that is in there, I do believe that this has to end so we can start operating in normal ways and we can start talking about how we improve housing uh, between the landlords and the tenants. I spend a lot of time in the neighborhood talking to people who are renters and who rent, and um, it's not as hostile as these meetings make it sound. There, there is a way forward, but we're not gonna move unless this ends. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Please state your name and begin. Um, hi, I'm Gigi. I'm calling because I'm a tenant in Los Angeles, um, and I think that the uh, moratorium, uh, the eviction moratorium should, and protection should continue. Um, first of all, it's weird that people are calling in um, about buying houses that people were living in and expecting to live there themselves without consulting the people who live there. That doesn't sound like a a good way to secure your future. It just sounds like an awful thing to do to the family who's living there. Um, and second, um, you know, the pandemic, it might be over on paper, but a lot of us are still sick. Um, a lot of us still haven't recovered income that we lost. A lot of us are still struggling to find jobs. Even if the pandemic is over on paper, the effects of the pandemic are still ongoing. And we need to maintain those protections um, so that we can, you know, like, we can recover, you know, from, from this. I, I don't see how anyone's going to be able to recover from, like, the ongoing debilitating effects of this Thank you. illness. If they're Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 8622. Please press star 6 to unmute. Please state your name and begin. Hello, my name is Juana. Um, I live in the San Fernando Valley and I own a small one bedroom rental condo in Reseda. Um, I'm begging you to please end the eviction moratorium on December 31st. My parents came from El Salvador. My mom cleaned houses, my dad cleaned buses. The little money they could save, they gave to me to put down for this condo so that it could belong to my family. You can imagine my sadness as I'm now 18 days into the foreclosure process because my tenant has not paid its rent in eight months and has not communicated us to her need. And she can't tell me that she needs protection. I, in turn, have no way to plead a case to the bank. Please end the eviction moratorium. It's hurting us, the mom and pop landlord. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Salma Rojas, and I'm calling from the Coalition for Economic Survival. CES strongly opposes the LHC proposal and urges the City Council to reject it. 
We cannot lift COVID tenant protections that have kept tens of thousands of people housed without first implementing strong permanent protections. Without permanent protections, a phase out puts tenants in danger of losing their homes and does nothing to address the housing crisis that existed well before the pandemic. It would result in increased homeless numbers, skyrocketing evictions, extreme and ha extreme hardships for renters, particularly low-income people of color. Tenants would also have to make a cruel and heartbreaking decision, give up their beloved family pet or lose their home. Any action taken by this council must guarantee maintaining the roof over renters' heads and keeping families together, with including the, and that includes their pets as well. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Katherine Shreenan, and my brothers and I inherited our parents' family home after my father died last June. We are not millionaires. We don't own um, all a bunch of properties. We don't make a lot of money like people are talking about. Our parents worked very hard for their home, and they, they passed it on to us. Due to these protections, our tenants will not leave. They've sabotaged us trying to sell the home. My brother lost his home in Florida last year due to a storm. He cannot use that money. He's financially insecure. What about the people that own their own home and they've worked really hard? What about us? This broad law doesn't protect people like us. It only protects a certain population. And people making comments about, oh, you know, you make all this money or you have all this stuff, that's not our case. So why are we, why are we creating these broad laws that, that don't protect people like us? It's unconstitutional. It's not right. If LA County wants to do this, then they can buy our home and take it over if they want. But we have no ability to sell it because of Thank these you. laws that are in place. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. So we have a caller with a block number, so we don't know how to identify it. If it may be you, please say something. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next caller because we don't know what else to do. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Frank Nemeroff. My late wife and I invested our life savings and took out an additional mortgage on our home to purchase a small apartment <laughs> building in Venice in 2013. My family business closed during the COVID pandemic, so my sole income is rental income. I have a tenant who has not paid rent since February 2020. While most of the past due rent has been paid by rent relief programs, not everything has been covered. The tenant is presently seven months in arrears, with total past due rent more than $19,000 and rising each month. I am angry beyond words at being forced to provide free housing for this tenant. I'm aware that the moratorium says tenants will have 12 months to make up missed rent payments, but this is completely unrealistic. The arrearages will have become too great to ever be repaid. The eviction moratorium has turned people like me into providing free housing indefinitely for tenants who either can't pay or choose not to. This is grossly unfair, placing a tenant's financial Thank burden you. onto me. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Caller with the phone number ending in 8393, please begin. Okay, 
appropriate speaker, um, please start up or we're going to move on to the next speaker. Okay, we're going to have to move on. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Miss Foster, and I'm just saying, for the love of God and all that is holy, please end this long overdue assault on landlords. I can't stress enough how this has been one of the greatest failures to protect taxpayers from fraud and abuse that has transpired as a result of a lack of oversight and accountability that should have been in place from the beginning. One of my own tenants applied to housing is key. She told them that she owed me money that she didn't owe, and they sent her over $39,000. They never contacted me, asked me anything to confirm. They just took her word for it. And, uh, you know, she submitted fraudulent ledgers, fraudulent statements, and they just gave her money. I personally know of other people that have continued to work and or had no change in income and just chose not to pay their landlord. This has been a shameful abuse of power and lack of oversight that has backfired. Thank you, Thank you Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, Estelle Pacheco with the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce, calling on behalf of over 500,000 businesses in Los Angeles in support of item one. The actions taken by the city in early 2020 were meant to be temporary. Infectious rates are down, vaccination progressed, full employment has returned, and the state and federal government have given massive amounts of direct monetary assistance to help residents that were most in need. Additionally, California has implemented strong emergency provisions that have permanently alleviated residential rental debt concerns. I hope you'll consider supporting item one. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Leila Nguyen. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to urge um, the city council members to please, please end the eviction moratorium. It has gone long enough, and um, it's really unnecessary. And I would like to address the points that were pointed out by um, this pro-tenant group. Um, we are hardworking people. I don't know any landlords who are affected by this who do not work. We all, all work very hard, work multiple jobs, and put our life saving into this property so that we can get some earnings and support our family. And, um, you know, to assume that we're just bad people is very unjust. You know, it is really uncalled for. And also, you know, this, this advocate, you know, why don't you just donate a part of your paycheck to house these people? You should feel ashamed of yourself. You are, you are unreal. You are not going to ever take any portion of your paycheck to pay for any of these damages. So you can say all you want because that's what your employer is asking you to do. It is very, very unjust. <laughs> Thank you. Please state your name Hi, and begin. Name is... Hi, my name is Shelly. I'm calling in to ask you guys to end this moratorium as well. It's not fair to landlords. You guys are putting a hardship on us that we can't even, we, we're unable to pay our bill because we have a tenant that's not paying their bill and they haven't paid us since March of 2020. It's really unfair that you guys don't see both sides of this. I don't know how you don't realize it's a domino effect like the tenants don't realize it, they don't care. They're taking advantage of the system and it's not just us that are getting taken advantage of. They haven't paid us, they can pay us, but they're choosing not to pay us because they know they have this umbrella over them. We are getting, we have to pay for any repairs, we have to pay the mortgage, we have to pay for the water, all the maintenance of the property and nothing is coming back to us in return. It's very much a misunderstanding that people who own 
a property are making some huge profit off of it. There's so Thank many you. bills that. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, this is Nicole, uh, and I'm a landlord. I'd like you to drop the moratorium to end it. I, I only have time for one point, and I have a million. The point is government, Section 8, is supposed to provide housing for people due to a recession, due to a pandemic, because they get cancer, all kinds of reasons. But the Section 8, you stop giving them money. You know, I'd like to see corporations give uh, the money for rent and it's taken out of your pension. You know, when you invest in a, in, a, in a company, you don't expect the company to pay the rent of the people that they laid off and it was their fault. It's not the fault of the, the landlord. I feel so bad for these people. I wish you would just increase taxes and take care of them, but it's the government's responsibility. Government pays food, medical, and some housing but they need to be housing for all people in distress, not an individual sole proprietor. Cherry pick. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Hi, hello, my name is Victor Reyes and I'm calling on behalf of Vica Valley Industry Commerce Association. We urge the committee to recommend a responsible phase out of the city's eviction moratorium. It's time the housing providers throughout the city can resume normal operations to ensure thriving communities. In 2020, the city took drastic and necessary actions to slow the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Fortunately, we are in a very different environment today. The improved public health environment, availability of vaccines and lack of shelter in place orders, as well as the improved economic situation gives us uh, the ability to phase out the eviction moratorium and rent free. More concerning, the city has maintained regulations which has been abused and leaving residents with no ability to obtain financial assistance. Continuation of these moratoriums will force small business rental housing providers to remove their buildings from the rental market. Buildings are already being removed from the rental market or sold to developers or corporate property owners who will turn the city's naturally occurring affordable housing into condominiums or luxury rental units. Uh, it is long overdue that the city seeks to end Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, this is Sandra, and also I'm an, uh, one of the landlords in Westside, and I really believe that tenants are abusing this system. They, they got a lot of money, and uh, they don't um, they don't want to cooperate with landlords and you know this is the only um, income that I have and uh, everything has been uh, uh, gone up and uh, we cannot raise any rent uh, and uh, you know everything's back to normal I just want to know why uh, the moratorium needs to be stayed and you know there are a lot of jobs out there people can work and it's not true that the um, COVID thing still makes people sick because it's not that severe with all the vaccination available uh, and I believe they're just making excuse and uh, they're abusing system everything needs to uh, get back to normal and landlord needs to thank you. pay thank you speaker Caller with the phone number ending in 9998, please press star six to unmute. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Isabel Gonzalez and I live in South LA. I've been living here for over 30 years and I'm here with inner city struggle and in solidarity with the Isabel House Coalition. As a proud South LA resident, I want to urge the city to implement strong permanent tenant protection before breaking out emergency COVID-19 tenant <laughs> protection. To protect my community, the village who have raised me and who I love, with rent prices and inflation skyrocketing, many of them are struggling to make up 
for rent due to due to illness or job loss. Amid harassment by landlords in some living conditions, existing tenant protections are the only thing that have kept many from becoming homeless. South LA has been uh, has uh, seen an explosion of crime and homeless uh, shelter makeshift, and families doubling up the number of folks in apartments to avoid having their loved ones out on the street. Let's make no mistake, the pandemic is not over for those people. They need strong permanent uh, tenant protection before uh, any phasing out can take place, especially not immediately after. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm in my 30s. I am a small landlord. I own one studio loft that I'm renting out as I was relocated to a new job opportunity. I worked hard, paid for it all myself. I have a full-time job. I have not raised rent on the tenant. I tried working with this tenant to no avail. My tenant has been abusing the protections for seven plus months after his housing uh, his key ran out. He has not paid rent, claiming no funds due to COVID. However, he's getting tattoos, traveling, and creating videos of all of his extravagant life style and travels on Instagram. I'm digging into my savings to supplement his basic living expenses like rent, water, AC, heat, etc. Where are all the protections for the small landlords like myself? Please end this. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Tana, a member of the Small Rental Property Association. My husband and I purchased a duplex to live in with another family in 2020. Neither of us could afford another way. We turned to multifamily home ownership to afford homes of our own in Los Angeles, but duplexes are almost never sold vacant. And two years later, three years later, the other family still can't move in because of the moratorium on no fault. Three years is a lot of time for families with young kids, and three years is also a long time for emergency legislation to exist. Is an emergency order still warranted? What makes Los Angeles unique among all other cities in America who have long since ended their state's emergencies? Or are we using the moratorium to backdoor legislation? Our tenants have not suffered COVID hardships. They own multiple cars, regularly go to resorts, horse races. They're paying rent, but that rent is so far below market price that they have argued it simply does not make sense for them to move. So while the moratorium on no-fault evictions continue, we continue to subsidize their extravagant lifestyle, losing mon money every month while we make up the difference on the mortgage. I beg you, support multifamily homeownership. It's a solution to the affordable housing crisis. End this emergency moratorium and move on from your first draft of this housing policy. Start Thank repo. You. Start Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 8519, please press star 6 to unmute. Last time, caller with the phone number ending in 8519, please press star 6 to unmute. Okay, we're going to move on to the next caller. Please state your name and begin. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Hernandez. I'm a maintenance organizer. Uh, we are asking you guys to please keep uh, permanent protection for the tenant. It's really important to help them out. I myself was able to benefit from the protections uh, during uh, 2020, 2021, 2020. Uh, and I see there's still people that is being harmed by these comments. Uh, we hear the landlords being uh, harassing tenants, so we need your, the protection. Before you guys take everything away, please make sure that you guys uh, leave some protection for tenants. You know, we must come together to um, under, uh, an, un so an understanding where we have uh, our people uh, being housed. 
Uh, we cannot have any more homeless in the streets. We have to think of everyone else. We do not want our streets to end up with people and on harm hands. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Necesito traducción. Hello? Necesito traducción. Thank you, the translator. Uh, this interpreter is speaking the, the color requesting translation, so I'll explain that I can translate for him. Buenas tardes. Sí, una vez que usted termine con su participación, yo voy a traducir todo a inglés. Quiero hacer comentario público en el artículo número uno y comentario público. I would like to make a public comment on article number, item number one. Hola, mi nombre es Hassan y vivo en el distrito 14. He vivido aquí por más de cinco años y estoy con la organización ACE y solidaridad con Keep LA House. Como inclino, quiero insistir a la ciudad a que implementen fuertes protecciones permanentes para inquilinos antes de eliminar gradualmente las protecciones de emergencia para inquilinos por COVID-19. Hi, um, my name is Hassan. I live in District 14. I have been living here for the past five years. And uh, I'm with the, uh, with the Keep LA House Department. And I would like to strongly ask you to have some permanent protection for tenants to do that before you progressively remove this current law for COVID-19 protection. Con los precios del alquiler y la instalación por las nubes, Muchos de nosotros luchamos por recuperar el alquiler perdido debido a una enfermedad o pérdida de trabajo en medio del acoso de los propietarios y las condiciones de vivienda en los barrios uh, marginados. Las protecciones existen para inquilinos solo son lo único que ha evitado que muchos de nosotros nos quedemos sin hogar. Considering the price for rent, many of us have had to fight to recover either from illness or because we have lost a job. So we are in the middle of a lot of situations going on. We live in marginal areas. And so this protection for tenants has been the only thing that has kept us from going homeless. Thank you very much. Okay, before we take the next speaker members, um, I realize it's already been 50 minutes um, worth of public comment, but I'm going to go ahead and go another 10 minutes because um, we do still have a quite a number of of speakers waiting to speak, and I want I want to be as um, uh, thoughtful to that as possible, knowing that we also have um, other committees that some of you have to get to. So why don't we take another 10 minutes, and we'll take the next speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Sandra Guzman, and I am here today with Inner City Struggle, and I am in solidarity with the Keep LA House Coalition. I am a proud South Central Los Angeles SD2 resident. I've been living here for the past 23 years, and I am currently raising my daughter here as well. As a renter, I want to urge the city to implement strong permanent tenant protections before phasing out emergency COVID-19 tenant protections. Tenant needs stronger permanent protections because families like ours are struggling before the, before the pandemic and families are struggling now as we start to move on. But also let's not forget that the pandemic hasn't ended and families are still struggling and still fighting to get back on the feet. So I urge you to protect and stand in solidarity with the tenants. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin. Good afternoon and thank you for your time. I'm Katie Seymour. I represent 1100 units in Hollywood in support of ending the moratorium. While we continue to hear about the large corporations that profit and that they're not impacted, what isn't recognized is we also have brown leases that must be paid in the amount of over $3.3 million for the ground alone. This does not include our operational expenses, but operational expenses which exceeds upwards of $10 million annually. We currently have upwards of unpaid rent 
exceeding six million dollars from residents that have clearly stated they are capable of paying rent but have chosen not to because they aren't required to. I urge you to end the moratorium. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 6499. Please state your name and begin. Caller with the phone number ending in 6499, please press star 6 to unmute. Please state your name and begin. Mi nombre es Arnulfo Soria, necesito traducción. Yes, my name is Hermoso Soria. Quiero hacer un comentario público en el artículo 1, por favor. I would like to make a public comment on item number one. Go ahead, speaker. Adelante, por favor. Mi nombre es Arnulfo Soria, soy miembro, soy miembro de ASA y vivo en el Distrito 9. He estado viviendo aquí por los últimos siete años como inquilino y pedimos protecciones para los inquilinos que le implementen más fuertes protecciones permanentes para inquilinos. Yes, my name is Ernesto Soria and I live in district number nine. I have lived here for seven years as a tenant and I'm only asking for protection for us as tenants to please uh, have those protections permanently for us. Las protecciones de emergencia es una causa universal. Las protecciones existentes para inquilinos son lo único que han evitado que muchos de nosotros nos quedemos sin hogar. Emergency protection is a universal cause, and they are the only thing that has kept us a lot of us from going homeless. La pandemia ha afectado significativamente mi situación de vida porque uh, Hubo temporadas que me quedé sin trabajo, hubo uh, cuatro ocasiones que tuve, me pegó el COVID, tengo a mi cargo cuatro niños y ocho, perdón, cuatro niños y cinco nietos en mi casa y si me sacan de mi apartamento, pues qué vamos a hacer. The pandemic has affected me, has affected my life significantly. Uh, sometimes losing my job and also I have had COVID four times and I have four kids and five grandkids and so there's no way that I can lose my apartment. Levantar las protecciones es imprudente e inhumano. Por eso Thank, apoyo you. La... Thank you. So we'll get the translation on the last bit. It would not be a human thing to remove this. Okay. Thank you. Please stay good morning. And begin. Good, good afternoon, committee members. My name is Juan Omares, Council District 6. Hello, Nuri, Mr. Pablo. Um, calling regarding this agenda item, I've heard from many people from both sides, tenants and small landlords. I believe both sides have valid reasons because I've been reading about this for the past two years. I believe that the city should work with both providing tenant protection for individuals who are working class, who are low income, who are vulnerable to becoming homeless, who are lost their jobs, and to help those individuals with their mortgages and, and, and utilities because both sides are, are impacted, not just one side, except for the larger landlords. We don't need, they don't need our help, but the co common person are struggling to pay their rent their mortgages, property taxes, and it frustrates me that people are Thank fighting you. over Thank and you. not working. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is David Bullock. I'm from Granada Hills. I live in uh, Council District 13. I know another caller called earlier and said that landlords should get a uh, real job 
it takes a lot of sacrifice in order just to save up a down payment to get a property and then it takes a lot of work to do inc uh, improvements on that property including code improvements improvements that will make the place more livable uh, as been stated already the pandemic has ended the restrictions that have been placed and the policies that have been placed has been removed already so along with all those policies this eviction moratorium along with the employee vaccine mandate should be lifted thank you thank you Please state your name and begin. My name is Steven. I'm a small landlord in the city of LA. I'm begging you to end the eviction moratorium. I have two tenants that are behind in their rent. Uh, owners have uh, severe uh, expenses, inspections. I had to borrow money to do a city mandated uh, retrofit. Owners have bills. We, we're affected by inflation, just like tenants. And it's not fair that we're pushing the small landlords out. And I think this is a big cover-up because the city's done a bad job in managing, mismanaging the homeless problem. I love my tenants, but this is not fair. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Tom Daniels. I'm an affordable housing provider. Before the pandemic, my residents were on average about 30% below market. Now they're approximately 50% below market. Some tenants are asking me why we haven't raised rent. And uh, we've told them uh, during the Great Recession, we've made special arrangements with tenants to give them rebates, to keep them in, to do things for them specially. We take good care of the tenants we have. And uh, now we need to put on a new roof and new water heaters. We don't have the money to do that. We're operating in the red. And now we're listing uh, two buildings for sale. If we sell to a large developer or to some mega corporation, I don't think they're gonna take the care of these uh, residents like we do. I just don't see it happening. I uh, appreciate your thoughts and please try to give us a definite date on the end of the rent freeze, especially uh, really uh, does affect our economics. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hello, my name is Alicia and I am a supervising children's social worker with LA County DCFS and I am also a small landlord. I'm also, also the mother of an autistic child and a college bound daughter. As a social worker, I have been trained to never advance the needs of my clients if it means causing detriment or deprivation upon others. The policies by the city have done, if not caused that deprivation upon small landlords. The, la the moratorium and the evictions, no rent increases for three years, pushing policies for landlords um, from not being able to check criminal records, pushing policies on eminent domain upon other owners, government use and trying to pass a policy to keep landlords from suing for back rent Essentially, it's causing horrible detriment on landlords. It's far too progressive. I'm a Democrat, and I don't believe in these progressive policies. No support by LAHD, as they, the city council, and our city mayor show, if anything, clear biases against small landlords. For shame on current price for not meeting with the small landlords in this district, as I have often called this office. Thank you. Only meeting. Thank you. Members, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and take an uh, additional five callers before I close up public comment for our committee today. Take the next speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, my name is Rebecca Viejo. I'm the trustee for my elderly parents. Um, they are also Janarians who rely on the income from their rental properties in Council District 14. This past year, they haven't been able to collect any rent from their tenants. Meanwhile, they are beset by health and safety and nuisance notices from the city, which my parents aren't able to address because their tenants have taken advantage of these protections and are not cooperative. Um, I urge the City Council to um, end this eviction moratorium because they will put out of business 
um, good people like my parents who rely on this when they're on a fixed income. Please end this moratorium now. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 9737. Please state your name and begin. My name is uh, Ron Jacob. I just want to state something. When we purchase as landlords our property, never in the escrow documents, never in the lease agreement, it shows that government has a right to take our property hostage because of any consideration. If you, the city believes that they want to go ahead and give people the right to live free rent, we have no problem. Write us a check for the building and go ahead and you can do whatever you want with the property. But this is a business. We work hard to get the, the, the property and this is a business. So I'm asking you please to end this because the tenants are taking advantage of this and it's ridiculous. People, I have Section 8 tenants that go ahead and cut their hair for their people and uh, for, for people and claim they have no money. We have people here that are obviously taking advantage. And nobody's going to be evicted or on the street, and I'll tell you why. Because if bottom line, they're paying cheap rent, and they're working right now, and they're going to go ahead and keep on paying rent because they don't want to be in the street. So the, 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 the saying that the people are going to be in the street, I think, is really you. ridiculous. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. My name is Audrey Lopez King. I'm a member of the Coalition of Small Rental Property Owners. The local eviction moratorium and rent freeze are a knife wound to the heart of my small business. My ability to maintain this investment was already crippled by existing outdated policies that increased my expenses, eroded my property rights, restricted my income, stood in the way of refinancing, repairs, bill pay repayments, and my ability to address the breaches of contracts. Rent is the lifeblood of my industry. Rent increases prior to COVID were between 3 and 5% per year. Now they are not allowed at all. You've made it a city policy to take my income and my capacity to protect my family's legacy while denying the right to fully enforce binding private contracts. Due to your practices, not only am I forced to cover the rents of grown men, women, and their children, but I also have to pay their bills I pay tenant water bills in excess of $30,000. I'm a small business owner. Thank you. Without the means. Of Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and begin. Hi, this is Alicia Nyajolu. Uh, we are a housing provider in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, We'd like to thank ACID for their report and having the courage to recommend an end date to the eviction moratorium. Uh, there's no question that the COVID-19 related emergency eviction moratorium and the rental increase freeze, which is not a squarely addressed but in their report, have served their purpose and must end. The conditions present in March of 2020 are simply no longer here. Schools were shut down. Everyone was uh, forced to stay at home. There were no vaccines or treatment, soaring unemployment, and there were high death rates. That's simply not the case anymore. LA hosted the Super Bowl, for goodness sakes. Uh, and there many, many indoor events are currently being held with little or no masking. Even the president has said the pandemic is over. So it's insulting to be talking about COVID-19 related protections when the rest of the city and country have clearly moved on and resumed business as usual operations. Housing providers should be allowed to do the same. Thank you, and there's Speaker. No Thank you. And members, this will be the last speaker. Please state your name and begin. What we are experiencing today is corrupt politicians working with dirty developers and now for decades our homeless situation has been getting worse because the lack of them creating affordable housing what we're going to see now is inflation take place we're also going to see the high rents that are already been happening way before the pandemic 
and a large growth of, of, of homeless people that will now be in the city, bigger than we ever, ever seen before. And the city is responsible to protect the health, safety, and wealth of the public. The corruption only gets worse when you have almost half of your council in <clears throat> being in, in uh, legal proceedings for being corrupt and working with dirty politicians. This is something that's serious that's going to affect a lot of the renters. We're the majority of the city. Where's the equitability that the city keeps talking about when they want to have equitable meetings in their committee? The city and the elected officials should be embarrassed of the situation that Thank we're you. in. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, members, I'm going to go ahead and close public comment for today's committee meeting. If I can have the clerk read item number one into the record, please. Thank you, Adam. Item number one is a Los Angeles Housing Department report and presentation relative to recommendations and possible amendments to the eviction moratorium, data relative to the emergency rental assistance program, gaps in tenant protections, stakeholder outreach, and a phased-in timeline. The Housing Committee considered this matter at its meeting held on September 14, 2022. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, and before we, we go into um, our housing development um, for a brief overview, I just want to remind us all that the eviction moratorium was put in place earlier during the pandemic in order to really protect the most vulnerable tenants, especially low-income families in our city. Uh, but, but we put this in place um, and we consider um, our moratorium to be one of the strongest tenant protections in this country. And we've kept these protections in place for longer than almost any other municipality in the state. And so for that reason, in February, if you all remember, nearly two years after we started the pandemic, um, I introduced a motion to ask the housing department to start thinking about what a transition out of these temporary eviction protections would look like. And that work has been taking place. The goal still remains the same members. We must put in place long-term protections for our tenants while still preserving the economic well-being of our small mom and pop landlords. And so even though we can't forget that these policies are intended to ensure that our homeless crisis does not become any worse as a result of the pandemic. That's also been one of our primary goals. But the housing department has spent months now with all the stakeholders on both sides of this issue um, to be able to produce a set of recommendations that is both balanced and that takes every um, perspective into account. And I believe that that's been done by our housing department. So. With that, I'd like to introduce Anna Ortega uh, from the Housing Department here to present their report to us in committee. Anna, can you hear me? Yes, Councilwoman. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. Um, why don't you go ahead and begin your presentations, and then I will take um, questions from um, the members. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council members. Um, as was uh, read by the city clerk, the instructions to the housing department were to propose possible amendments to the eviction moratorium, provide data on the emergency rental assistance program, provide recommendations to address any gaps in tenant protections, report on stakeholder outreach, and provide a phased in timeline. We did our very best um, to produce that in the report that, that is being considered today. Our goals included um, to provide clarity on the timelines as well as to harmonize with adopted city ordinances, with state law, and with the county um, tenant protections resolution, as well as to address any gaps in existing tenant protections. We were asked to meet with stakeholders and we had a number of meetings throughout the month of July, mostly in July, uh, with both many tenant organizations, some of them under the umbrella of the Keep LA House Coalition, um, as well as with landlords. The tenant recommendations were about expanding just cause, providing uh, limits on evictions for failure to pay rent, reducing the annual allowable rent increase for RSO units, provide relocation assistance for non-RSO tenants for economic displacement, enforce tenant anti-harassment 
that the city should codify the right to counsel and to adopt a set, a set of motions under the fair access for renters package. On the other hand, landlords wanted the immediate, immediate lifting of the eviction moratorium and freeze on RSO rent increases. They most of all, I think, wanted a, a definitive end date. They want tenants to validate a hardship and landlords to be restored their ability to manage their properties properly. They wanted restoration of landlord rights to own or occupy and to evict tenants in order to comply with government agency orders. They wanted rest restoration of the annual rent adjustments and recommended a thoughtful analysis of the many complex permanent policy changes separately from the lifting of the eviction moratorium. What we have proposed um, um, with regard to, to rent and non-payment of rent is to phase out the non-payment protections uh, as of the date that the council determines that the eviction moratorium should be lifted. When we prepared our report, we were discussing December 31st. We were also recommending that tenants um, provide a self-attestation if they are unable to uh, pay the rent. With regard to rental arrears, there's two deadlines uh, at play. One of them based on state law, which requires payment of um, COVID debt as defined in state law by August 1st, 2023. So that would be an unpaid rent that was due from March 1st, 2020 through this, um, September 30th, 2021. So that debt has to be paid by August 1st. Furthermore, our, our moratorium is going on beyond September 30th, 2021. So the debt that accrues from rent that was due from October 1st, 2021 through the end of the eviction moratorium uh, shall have to be paid 12 months after the lifting of the eviction moratorium. Those are the main things related to COVID. It's the lifting of the um, limitations on evictions for non-payment as well as no-fault evictions. Beyond that, we were asked to look at gaps in existing protection. So the biggest gaps are for those renters who rent units that are not subject to the rent stabilization ordinance. So for that reason, we um, strengthened and repeated our prior recommendations for adoption of just cause eviction protections for non-RSO units. We had actually submitted a report um, with these recommendations just prior to the, the uh, um, COVID pandemic in March. Our report was sent in January of 2020. And what that means is that that uh, renters in non-RSO units need to be given a legal reason for eviction. It doesn't mean you can't evict people, or it doesn't mean that um, you can only evict them for, for non-payment of rent. There's actually 14 legal reasons for eviction. Some of, seven of them are for things that the tenant does, like not pay the rent or violate the lease, being a nuisance, using the uh, rental unit for an illegal purpose. All of those are part of the seven at-fault reasons that are legal reasons for eviction. Then there are uh, seven no-fault eviction reasons, such as when an owner wants to move in themselves, when they want to move in a resident manager, when they are doing primary renovation, or when they wish to go out of the rental housing market. All of those reasons are also legal reasons for eviction, but those require that a notification be filed with the housing department and that tenants subject to no-fault evictions receive relocation assistance. The policy to adopt just cause for all rentals means that um, all tenants would be due those protections, not just RSO tenants. So we've recommended a new ordinance that would provide eviction protections for all multifamily units, including corporate-owned single-family homes and condominiums, provide relocation assistance for all no-fault eviction, that landlords should provide written notification to their tenants at the onset of a tenancy, uh, informing them of their protections under city law, 
Uh, we're also recommending modification of the rules about evictions for uh, a resident manager so that these in the future will only be allowed when an on-site manager is required by law or in order to comply with the terms of an affordable housing covenant. We're also recommending filing of notices to terminate tenancies from both RSO and non-RSO rental units. There's a number of items. There are very many complex recommendations. So there's um, two items that we are recommending that the um, Housing Department and the City Attorney collaborate in reporting back, and those are uh, limitations on evictions for failure to pay rent. It's been um, pointed out that some jurisdictions set a threshold for how much back rent is owed. So the city proposes to look at that and recommend a policy for the city of Los Angeles, as well as the possibility of, of um, requiring relocation assistance for economic displacement when the rent is raised by a high amount. So those are items that we will report back on. We'll also report back on updated studies about funding resources to enforce these changes and strengthening of tenant laws. So we're asking for authorization to update a study that was previously done um, in conjunction with our earlier reports. We've also been asked to look at the formula for the annual RSO rent increase and to look at city mandated fees that go into landlords um, operating expenses. So that's two studies that we will be returning back once they're completed. If adopted, the timeline would be uh, upon the lifting of the eviction moratorium, um, tenants must begin paying their current rent and also for a period of time, depending on the, the timing of the adoption by council, tenants will have to provide uh, a, a self-attestation that they are unable to pay the rent due to the impact of COVID-19. I mentioned there will be two deadlines for repayment of rental debt, August 1st, 2023 for unpaid rent um, due up through September 30th, 2021, and then an additional deadline to be set 12 months after the council lifts the ev eviction moratorium. Uh, under the current ordinances that the council adopted, the annual allowable rent increase would be paused for 12 months. There are other kinds of rent increases that would be able to go into effect 60 days after the eviction moratorium is lifted. Those are uh, rent increases that landlords get approval from, from LAHD, such as for capital improvements, seismic retrofit, and primary renovation. Uh, finally, there was one troubling category of no-fault eviction that's been paused with negative repercussions for landlords, and that's evictions based on compliance with a government agency order. Our recommendation is that those be allowed as soon as the ordinance can be written and become effective. So that is a summary of the department's recommendations uh, in our August 25th. 2022 report, and I am available for any questions. Thank you. Question. Thank you very much, um, Anna. And before we go into questions and discussions on this item, I, I do have a, a long list of amendments and changes that I like to, that I like um, for the clerk to read. Um, so we can just put that out there now. Um, so Madam Clerk, can you please read the list of recommendations or I should say amendments into the record that I've provided for you? There, it's, it's very long, that's why I've asked her to help me with it. Can we, uh, I, I don't like to you break your, your rhythm here, but uh, Ms. Ortega said something at the end, I want something clarified. Can I ask that or I'm happy to hold also? Can you hold on Mr. Cedillo, I'm gonna go ahead and just ask uh, the clerk to read the list, the to read those amendments into the record. Sure. In case any of you have any questions on those as well. Can you go ahead and do that for me, please? Thank you. The following proposed amendments are changes to the Los Angeles Housing Department's report dated August 25, 2022. The revised recommendations incorporate new recommendations as well as technical changes requested by the Los Angeles Housing Department. Under section one, Roman, uh, letter A, amend sub sunset sections 49.99.2A non-payment of rent effective 
and the new date is February 1st, 2023, accept that, and then amend the next section, number one under A, effective new date, December 1, 2022, through February 1, 2023, Tenants who are unable to pay rent due to COVID-19 financial impact will have continued eviction, eviction protection only if the tenant has provided notice to the landlord of their inability to pay rent due to financial impacts related to COVID-19 within seven days after the date that the rent was due. Amend Section B under Roman numeral 1. Sunset Sections 49.99.2B, No Fault Evictions, 49.99.2C, unauthorized pets and additional tenants, and 49.99.4, demolition, permanent removal, Alice, of the LAMC, effective, new date, February 1st, 2023. Amend item number two under section B, provide that noncompliance and related inspection fees imposed between March 4, 2020 and new date, February 1st, 2023, due to a landlord's inability to comply with a government order to vacate as a result of the city's COVID-19 eviction moratorium shall be waived by both the Los Angeles Housing Department and the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety. Add new recommendation number five under section B, request the city attorney to include a new provision that RSO tenants whose no fault evictions were paused due to the eviction moratorium under 49.99.2, Point B, and who continue to reside, reside in their units be provided with a minimum 60-day notice and an opportunity to refile an appeal of the relocation amount due to them based on a change in disability status that affects the tenant's qualification for a higher relocation payment. Add new recommendation number six under section B under Roman numeral one, provide that no fault evictions for unauthorized pets and or tenants can be enforced only after February 1st, 2024, and after the landlord has provided a 30-day notice for the tenant to remedy the situation. Amend section D, provide that tenants must repay rental areas accumulated for rent due from October 1st, 2021 through new date, February 1st, 2023, due to COVID-19 financial impact by new date, February 1st, 2024. Amend Roman numeral number two, request the city attorney with the assistance of the Los Angeles Housing Department to draft an ordinance amendment for implementation on or before February 1st, 2023 to regulate evictions, just cause, in rental units formerly regulated under the COVID-19 tenant protections ordinances as, follow, as follows. Amend section A under Roman numeral two, regulate evictions on all non-RSO rental units is the amendment to restrict evictions to those reasons allowed under LAMC 151.09. Add section two to Roman numeral B, excuse me, to B under Roman numeral two, provide an amount of relocation assistance or rent waiver equal to one month of the tenant's rent that was in effect when the owner issued the notice to terminate the tenancy if the no fault eviction occurs in a single family home rental owned by a natural person where the landlord owns in the city of Los Angeles no more than four units of residential property and a single family home on a separate lot, inclusive of natural persons who have their properties in a trust. Excuse me. Amend section E of Roman numeral two, require the filing of notices to terminate tenancies from both RSO and non-RSO with the Los Angeles Housing Department and adding and report back to council on the evictions, including number of evictions, reason, cost of rent, etc. Under Roman numeral number three, amend section B, options to establish a threshold for relocation assistance to tenants for economic displacement. Amend Roman numeral six under section B, instruct the Los Angeles Housing Department to conduct an ex expedited economic study of the formula for setting the RSO annual allowable rent increase, as mentioned in recommendation five, analyzing in particular the recent changes in RSO allowable rent increases in the California cities, including but not limited to Oakland, Bell Gardens, Antioch, Pomona, Santa Ana, and Oxnard, including a review of mandated city fees, i.e. RSO, 
SCEP, LA SAN, Recycle LA, Recycla, DWP, et cetera, impacting operating expenses in rental properties. Amend Roman numeral number seven, instruct the LAHD to provide information on the department website and report back in 30 days on a comprehensive outreach campaign to inform tenants, landlords, and other interested parties about the Los Angeles City and County COVID-19 tenant protections applicable to Los Angeles City residents with consideration for language access and particular efforts targeted to tenants in areas identified as having high vulnerabil vulnerability as discussed in this report. Add new Roman numeral number nine, request the city attorney to draft an ordinance to sunset the ordinance number 186607 effective February 1st, 2023, and allow landlords to resume annual allowable rent increases for RSO rental units 12 months after the expiration of the eviction protections, and provide that rent increases foregone during the moratorium may not be imposed retroactively. Add Roman numeral number 10, as the CLA clarified on April 25, 2022, when Council File 21-1332 was before Council Committee, the provisions related to the protection of commercial tenants are no longer legally effective as a result of the expiration of the governor's executive order in September 2021. Therefore, I move that we add recommendation 10 as follows. Request the city attorney to report back with language that would delete Los Angeles Municipal Code section 49.99.3 and related sections to effectuate that the commercial tenant protections are no longer in effect consistent with the state. Add Roman numeral number 11. Instruct the Los Angeles Housing Department with assistance from the city attorney as needed to report back in 60 days on A, which sums of COVID-19 rental debt or rental areas are consumer debt and which are evictable debt. B, what steps would need to be taken by the city or the state of California to categorize all COVID-19 rental debt or rental areas as consumer debt. C, a framework for ensuring that a tenant's repayment of COVID-19 rental debt or rental areas is applied first to any evictable portions of debt before application to any portions categorized as consumer debt. D, options for the establishment of an ongoing rental assistance program. E, report back on the status of the rental relief registry, the number of pending Alice evictions filed during the moratorium, and the number of non-corporate single-family dwellings used as rental in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Anna, is there anything else you need to add? A point of clarification. Uh -huh. uh, because rent is due normally on the first of the month and it covers the the rental for the entire the entire month um, the first the first modification says to sunset 49.99.2a effective February 1st 2023 but if it's the intention of the committee to to um, pro provide extend the protections through January 31st, 2023, and then begin the new rules effective February 1st, then um, that very first date should be January 31st, 2023. So moved as a friendly thank amendment for the chair. Thank you, uh, thank you, Honor. So we will go ahead and incorporate that technical change into my proposed amendments. There are a lot of really important protections incorporated into the department's report and in the amendments, we should be that we all put together. So I really appreciate that, Anna. Thank you so much to you and to the housing department for spending so much time to thoroughly prepare these amend recommendations today, Anna. So I really do appreciate your help. One of the amendments, though, Anna, uh, does include what the clerk just read out um, in terms of a report back from the housing department on the minimum threshold for rent rental debt before someone can get evicted. I just wanna make sure, Anna, that we have a commitment from the department 
about providing that report back as soon as possible. Absolutely. Um, that was in our original recommendations, and we've had discussions uh, underway with the Office of the City Attorney, including uh, a review, a brief review of what other cities are doing in that, in that issue. So we should be able to report back ex expeditiously on that. that I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Just wanted to make sure we, we um, made that clear. So members, that's all I have, but I know there's um, two of you who would like to um, ask questions. Mr. Cedillo, why don't we start with you? Mr. Cedillo. Thank you. I want, first of all, let me praise you for <clears throat> allowing the public comment that you did. You got close to matching the amount of public comment that we had in our committee meeting. And so I want to note that for the record. Second, I'd like to also acknowledge the incredible hard work of the department. Uh, there is enough on both sides here for people to be unhappy with. And my experience as a union organizer and a negotiator tells me that this is probably the best deal that we can put together. And it's been put together by a department that works day in and day out to address the extraordinary challenges that face our city. I know there's a lot of interest in comparative government these days, but the challenges that confront this city, its leadership are unique and uh, very special and organic to the city of Los Angeles. And that is our first and foremost obligation is to serve the residents uh, of the city of Los Angeles. And so I want to note that. And I really acknowledge the hard work of uh, Ansel and Ortega, uh, all the uh, people who work in the department. Uh, they're the consummate professionals and they have met the challenge of a really extraordinary time. People have come to us and they have a lot of questions, but I don't think, Madam uh, President, that it can be uh, understated the significance of the decisions that we had to make going into a pandemic, a global pandemic that shut down the economy of the world and us unknowing, unless we had lived 100 years ago and were familiar with the last pandemic, global pandemic, it was unknowing for us to make the decisions that we made. It was difficult for us because we didn't have uh, the data points. We didn't have the markers. We didn't know when this was going to end. Uh, the early speculations were all modest compared to what the world had to confront. Uh, you, as president of the council and the rest of the council, took bold action that was required. It was not exact. It was not precise. It was not nuanced. But that was the nature of the challenge that this body confronted. And so I want to applaud your leadership uh, on this matter. Uh, things took place. They were not perfect, but they were what was required at the time. Our priorities were the people who lived in the city of Los Angeles. And we had to lay that decision-making process over other challenges that were pre-existing. Challenges of homelessness, challenges of housing, challenges of constructing housing in the city. And so again, I'm taking this moment in the second uh, to applaud uh, your leadership on this question of the decisions that we made during the pandemic uh, as they were. Now the challenge for us that confronts us is how do we walk away from this pandemic? And again, it's unknowing, it's gonna be difficult. It will not be precise or, or exact, uh, but we have to be as nuanced as we can be uh, as thoughtful as we can be. It's broad brush, but we have to pay attention to the uh, corners, the details, uh, because not one size fits all. And so there will be other, I imagine, subsequent motions, other subsequent fixes that will come that we will learn about as we go forward uh, from this point forward with the uh, amendments that you've offered. Uh, I applaud you, I support the amendments. Uh, I look forward to us bringing this to the full council and I'm prepared to vote for the uh, motion as I was the last time we met. Thank you. Mr. O'Farrell. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And I, I also wanna thank the housing department um, for this. Um, just um, as, as someone who was a renter most of my life, uh, grew up, we never owned a house. and. 
we face housing insecurity, we faced eviction. We, I was, my family, brother, two sisters, parents, we were evicted a couple of times growing up, so we know what it's like. Um, we didn't have the protections back then, but of course, we didn't have a worldwide pandemic either. Um, we know that this pandemic has caused tremendous hardships and uncertainty placed on renters, but we should also acknowledge there have been hardships for the true mom and pop landlords, uh, many of whom uh, called in today. I wanna thank both renters and these mom and pop landlords that have been so burdened and in some cases um, in arrears and or filing for bankruptcy, really impactful. Um, and nothing we do is neat, easy, or clean. We do our best and we, you know, we, we act. Um, my focus has always been to keep people housed. I know that I'm not alone on this council. But that was, I, I will say that is our focus and has been. In addition to the moratorium, uh, in, my, in my case, I led a $1 million rental assistance program um, as the pandemic really landed two years ago, over two years ago now. It helped about 500 households in the 13th district stay in their homes. And this was a framework for the additional citywide relief programs that eventually totaled more than $300 million. So this city, this council has helped keep thousands and thousands of people across Los Angeles in their homes. And Madam President, you said it in your opening remarks. And you mentioned that this city is a leader in the state. It's a leader in the country. I don't think any other city of any size in the United States has done or acted with uh, such robust level of resources for the people who need it most. Uh, in my case, our relief programs were much needed in the 13th district, where we have the highest number of multifamily rental units, as well as the highest number of rent stabilized units. We're working day in and day out to protect those. Uh, my district also had the highest number of applications for emergency rental assistance during the pandemic of any other council office. So now here we are two and a half years later, pandemic is winding down. We're entering into what will likely be called a long-term pandemic. Um, in addition to the uh, burdens on renters, we also, also have to recognize the hardships faced by mom and pop landlords. Talking about the people who are true mom and pops, duplexes, quads, three, three units. We've heard from lots of advocates, lots of real life stories. I spoke with a property owner who has a, an eight unit building who is selling it. He's getting out of the business because uh, he's not meeting his mortgage payments. And my fear is that it'll be sold to an LLC or a corporation, or God forbid, it'll be Ellis'd by someone who purchased it. Uh, we run real risks of losing these business, small mom and pop businesses, as well as property owners who are vested in the communities where they're providing um, rents to people and families who need them the most. most. These are real life stories. We know there are hardships, we hear them all the time. For mom and pop landlords, if a tenant is impacted by COVID-induced financial hardship and cannot pay rent, then their landlord is also going to be impacted. Hardships are all around. I wanna do everything I can to address those hardships, especially for people in my district, which is why today I introduced a very significant motion and I want my constituents to hear this and hopefully take advantage of this program should they need it. We're going to provide a fresh round of $3 million in rental aid to renters in the 13th district to assist the most vulnerable people who are impacted by the pandemic and loss of income. This program should be up and running before the end of October and to make it as convenient as possible, both tenants and landlords are gonna be able to apply. And this program will help thousands of renters and the mom and pop landlords that they rent from. So. My message to my constituents in, in my district that I represent is we want to help keep you in your homes. We, we continue to be here for you. More help is on the way very soon. And as Mr. Cedillo said, we're probably not done. This is just yet, yet another phase uh, as we find our way uh, as the pandemic draws to a close. Moving forward, we need to be very thoughtful and careful about a transition regarding the moratorium. Renters, who can pay rent and aren't impacted by COVID should absolutely continue paying their rent. For those who are still burdened by COVID and can't make payments, there should be communication with your landlord to use the extended moratorium protections, work together. 
realize that if one person's impacted, we're all impacted. As the moratorium eventually and inevitably comes to an end, you must end it in a way that provides a soft landing for these renters. I feel very strongly about getting this transition exactly right. As I said, and I'm not alone here, I've been a renter most of my life. My district has a high population of renters, probably number one in the city as far as the rental population. So this transition has to be very thoughtful. We monitored the housing committee and I understand there were multiple options discussed for transitioning out of the moratorium. Although the county is ending the moratorium at the end of the year, we all know that December is a month with holidays and extra expenses. Impacted renters should be given a little extra time to get back on their feet. So having said all that, and thank you colleagues for hearing me out here. I do have some questions for the department, beginning with, I, I understand the state and county both have their own timelines with the moratoriums. I don't wanna confuse landlords and tenants, so I'd like some clarification. Can the department elaborate on how these timelines interact with each other cross-jurisdictional and which timeline renters in Los Angeles should follow? The, um, I did discuss the non-payment or the, the repayment time for rental arrears accrued. So there are two dates that um, renters will need to remember. That will be, the first one will be October 1st, 2023. And then based on today's recommendations uh, or today's amendments, um, the rental debt for the later period would be due February 1st, 2024. So there oh. will be two time periods depending on what, what months tenants might owe rent for. Um, Thank you, Anna. And will, will the housing department be putting out a Q&A we'll uh, info in multiple languages? Absolutely. Uh, we intend to um, engage in a robust uh, outreach program because it is confusing about how all these things work together. And mm -hmm. we do have to explain both city provisions as well as um, the county and state provisions. But okay. I, I will say that part of what we worked very hard to do was to make recommendations that harmonize with what was there. And if, if there's any difference, the city protections are a little stronger, but still uh, in keeping with what's allowed under state and county law. I've uh, been out in the world a lot, and I know that there's still some confusion from renters and property owners, landlords, about uh, the sunsets, uh, uh, et cetera, of, of the moratorium. So um, I, I think we, should approach all of this with um, fresh, a fresh look so that everyone understands um, uh, everything moving forward. Thank you for that. And what kind of notification to the landlord will be required from renters who are impacted by COVID and unable to make payment? Will there be a document? What, what type of notification are we talking about here? Landlords have, uh, sorry, tenants have to inform their landlords that they are unable to pay the rent within seven days of the rent being due, uh, really by any method. We, the department will uh, provide a sample notification on our website just for convenience and clarity, but it, we don't wanna restrict the notifications that tenants may provide to their landlord because a tenant may just not know about it or, or just make a mistake. So we don't want to expose tenants to being liable for eviction because they didn't use the right form. But we do want to provide a sample for convenience. Okay, but it will have to be something written on a piece of paper somehow, right? Rather, rather than uh, just say, well, I told them and they still did this. In other words, some, something that protects both the renter and the landlord. It could, I believe that tenants are using emails. Okay, so, a record of some sort. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, colleagues, I'd like to talk about pets, members of our family. Uh, it's important to many people, including me. I was raised with animals. I have animals or an animal. Uh, as a longtime advocate of animal welfare, during the course of the Safer at Home Declaration, no people or pets were allowed to be evicted. And many Angelinos sought companionship in the isolated days of the early pandemic and adoption rates at our city's shelters were impressive. Um, 
I, for one, would not ever accept being parted from my dear little dog um, because he's a, a member of my family. I wouldn't expect anything different from anyone else. So a reversal of this protection could result in a rash of relinquishments for city shelters, and we know what happens to animals when that happens that are currently at capacity. Following a dry summer and rising inflation resulting in unintended overpopulation at our shelters, significant budgetary impacts to the department, the city, all of the things we've heard in the media about neglect and lack of attention for our, our poor little city critters. I think this is really important. So in my view, in order to mitigate this possibility, Madam President, in addition to your amendment, I'd like to direct the Department of Animal Services to report on policies and procedures for renters who have adopted pets during the emergency order who are in full compliance with all uh, animal services ordinances and regulations regarding pets to retain rather than relinquish their companions. Uh, Madam President, also I, I would ask that the department report back on and include recommendations regarding potential changes to Los Angeles Municipal Code 49.99.C to require landlords and building managers to make an exception of any pets in violation of a lease that predates the emergency order and treat the pets as an emotional support animal, companion animal, or therapy animal using the guidelines for such as predicted by the Federal Fair Housing Act for the rest of their natural lives. The duration of the tenancy of the tenant's lease or until such time the tenant voluntarily relocates the pet uh, or themselves. Uh, and I further ask the department to report back on policies in other jurisdictions that educate and regulate op adoptions of pets by residents who are subject to lease agreements that may restrict or prohibit pets in rental properties, further reducing the rates of relinquishment. Um, and um, that understanding that I think during the, the lockdown and the last going, you know, two and a half years of, of the pandemic, I would declare all of our animal companions as support companions. We know the level of depression and the level of isolation has really caused a, a number and has affected, impacted people's mental health. So I think this is really, really important. Uh, so um, I would appreciate that uh, friendly, uh, as a friendly amendment. Madam President, thank you. And thank you, Housing. Um, thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. So the way I understand what you just asked, request so there are three different report backs is that correct yes and okay. I, I believe I, yes thank you madam president i believe mr cedillo seconded your, your amendments is that correct that's correct yeah. yeah thank you you did all right so uh colleagues see no other um members on the queue i will go ahead and uh, recommend that we move um to approve item number one as amended and which is uh before us today so madam clerk and that was already seconded by mr cedillo earlier on in terms of my amendments yeah. But if we can ask the, 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 the clerk to please call the roll on item number one as amended, please. Council Member Martinez. Yes. Council Member Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Price. Absent. Council Member Cedillo. Yes. Council Member O'Farrell. Yes. Yes. Four eyes, this item is approved as amended. Okay, Madam Clerk, seeing no other um, items before us, is that correct? Correct, the desk is clear. Right, then our meeting is adjourned, members. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, housing is at three. Housing committee is through at three o'clock. You've got about a little nine minutes before you start committee. Good luck. Thank you. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.